Okay, okay everyone, so here is the next part of what we are going to work on. Um, I need you to leave your journal out, find a pair of scissors, and either a glue stick or tape, whatever you have at your house, I happen to just have tape. So make sure you have a pair of scissors and some tape. And then I need you, or a glue stick, and then I need you to get out your math workbook um, and turn to page 333. 333. It looks like this. There's our little toucan math bird. It says Unit 8, Lesson 8. So see if you can find that. Um, <clears throat> from now on at home, I don't really want you to rip out the pages in here. But on this one, I do want you to rip it out because we're going to be cutting and taping or gluing in shape. So go ahead and rip out page 333. And then you can put your workbook away. And we're going to go through... Um, most of this together on the video and then you're going to have to do some of it on your own later but <clears throat> for right now make sure you're looking at page 333 while you're finishing ripping that out um if you are with me already we're going to go ahead and read this part it says analyze a composite solid figure so this is these are showing you pictures of kind of what i was talking about earlier um that it's kind of like stacking two rectangular prisms on top of each other or side by side Anyway, a composite solid can be made by putting together two or more rectangular prisms. To find the volume of such a composite solid, divide it into individual prisms. So that was our step one, find the individual prisms and cut off chunks. That's our step one. Then it says use the formula, volume equals length times width times height, to find the volume of each individual prism. And then add the volumes to find the total volume. So in this description, they didn't talk about our step number two, but I have looked through the shapes and have done this before and know that there are always going to be some missing measurements. So we're going to throw in our step two in here, find the missing measurements. Then we're going to find the volume of each individual prism and add the volumes to find the total volume. So let's take a look <clears throat> at our first shape right here. Um, actually, that's not my favorite <clears throat> because it's not showing you the two different two different prisms. So let's actually look at the second shape right here. It's kind of an L shape. You can see that. You can see that the length from left to right is 15 inches. The width is 5 inches. The height is 3 inches on this gray um, on this gray prism. Hey look, we chose blue and gray and these shapes are blue and gray so that's pretty cool. Um, Alright, <clears throat> so you have this gray prism and then you have this rectangular blue prism. They're both rectangular. And they're just kind of stacked side by side. So you can see where they have taken their math magical knife pencil and they've chopped it off right here. And they're wanting you in your head to be able to pull apart and separate those two shapes. So if we look at this as separating it into two different shapes, we have to deal with some different measurements. So right now, step one, find the individual prisms cut off chunks. We can see there's a tall blue prism right here stacked side by side with this long gray prism right there. So we have found those. They have already decided for us where they're going to cut off the chunk. It's right there where that dashed line is. And now we're on step two. Find the missing measurements. So what we mean by, by that is if you look at just the gray prism right here. Sorry, this one. If you look at the, just the gray prism, is it really 15 inches still? The answer is no to that because it's 15 clear from this corner on the blue to the far corner gray on the right. So it is no longer 15 inches. That is not a correct measurement. So I actually think we're going to be kind of scr scratching that out, but make sure it's still visible because we're going to need it. But we're going to be writing different measurements here on the length. So let's just look at the gray one for a minute. So you can take your finger and cover up the blue. And if we're looking at just the gray, we know it's no longer 15 for the length. But we know the width stayed the same. We didn't change how wide the shape was. And we know the height stays the same. That wasn't changed either. So the only thing that's going to be a different measurement that we have to find is this length measurement. So I want you to look at that really quickly and think to yourself, what is the length of just the gray? I'm looking for the length of just this part. To that part. It can't be 15. 
and I'm just going to start looking for maybe, well, it would be 15 minus whatever that part was. So I'm going to use my blue to make that a little more bold, so should you. So where would I find what that little distance was right here? Remember, we're talking about rectangles. So wherever you see a line that looks the same amount of distance or is opposite of a rectangle, right? So you have the bottom, the opposite would be the top. So I know right now that this line, whatever distance this is, is going to be the same as that. But I also know that this is the front of this rectangular prism, and that is the back of the rectangular prism. So I know that because front and back are opposite, this is 3, this is 3, which then tells me that this is 3. So don't let that be, oh, that doesn't look like a very good 3, don't let that be super confusing. Just kind of look for numbers that help you find the missing measurements. Again, I found it by thinking, okay, well, where is a distance that looks like this? This is the bottom. This is the top. Those two are going to have the same measurements. But I still didn't even know this one. So I had to look at this as the front of the shape, and this is the back of the shape. Remember, opposites, front and back. So if this is 3, then the front would also be 3, which means that the top is 3 and the bottom is 3. So I now know that this missing piece is 3. So I should be able to use the calculations in my head to figure out, well, it used to be 15, but then I took away 3-inch chunk right here. So what inches are left? So 3 plus what would give me 15? The answer is 12. Congrats if you said that. The answer is 12. So my measurements for just the gray are not 15, 5, and 3. They are 12, 5, and 3. So to find the volume of the gray, remember volume is nice, it doesn't bite. Just do length times width times height. So just do 12 times 5 times 3. There's a couple of different ways you can do multiplication. You can combine the terms that you know easiest. But for me, doing 15 times 12 is not very easy. But I could do 60 times 3. That is a little bit easier in my head because I can do mental math. 60 times 3 is 18 with a 0 because 6 times 3 is 18 and we have a 0. So the volume of just the gray is 180 inches cubed. I won't make you write that part yet until our answer. And it was 180 inches cubed. That is only one part of how we find the volume of this composite solid. So in the next video, we're going to find out how to do the blue rectangular prism, and then on step three, we're going to add those two volumes together.